I'll say a few words about Kazakhstan. It was always my uh, goal to go once to Kazakhstan, particularly to see one of the special tulips uh, growing there. And it was never the case because I have been always out in, in, in other countries, mainly in Peru or Ecuador, uh, because I wanted to see uh, Tulipa regali. But you have to keep in mind that Tulipa regali is flowering around the 1st of March. So, sorry, uh, 1st of April, sorry, 1st of April. So it's very, very early. And uh, I uh, asked some, uh, some uh, fellow travelers, uh, good friends of mine in Holland, if they would like to share this trip. And they were very keen. And one of them was uh, Sjaak de Groot. He's one of the best uh, tulip specialists in the world. And uh, so the three of us, we went there just for six days. And uh, just for your information, I tried to organize this trip through a small agent in uh, Kazakhstan. And uh, they had a, a guide and about three uh, days before we went, I got an email from this guide and he said, I've been at the, at the location where the tulips are in, uh, should be in flower and they were all past flowering already. Even uh, some, uh, well, one or two flowers were just left and some were already starting to set seed. So to be honest, I was very disappointed. I thought, I, now I have the time to go there and everything will be out of flower. Uh, but these days you can search on the internet and I did very hard and I found one or two more locations, one even with GPS locations. And we arrived uh, on, on Saturday morning uh, at five o'clock, I think, and we spent three, four hours at the hotel. And, and then we got our uh, car. We drove for one half hour and we were in the middle of Tulipa Regali. So that's within a few hours, uh, we hit the jackpot. Anyway, we will start uh, looking at plants. Uh, as said, uh, we will uh, go, go to uh, Kazakhstan. And Kazakhstan is 60, 66 times bigger than, than the Netherlands and 11 times bigger than the UK. So it's a very, very fast country. And uh, the, the best uh, areas for alpines are in this area here. That's the uh, the Altai uh, area, and the Tian Shan is on in this area here, the Tian Shan Mountains, and that's the area we will visit, just in around El Mahati. So uh, I will have a close up of the map. So here's El Mahati, and you see all these yellow lines. That's where the roads we took, and uh, so around El Mahati are some nice uh, mountains, very easy to go get up by car. Uh, later on, we go to the Kordai Pass, and uh, over here, this is the area where the uh, Tulipa Regali we, we found. So this is about one hour, one hour and a half drive from Al Mahati. Another location is around here, but here they were already out of flower, even if it was at higher elevation. You will see details later on. And this is the Lake Kapsagai, and around Kapsagai, uh, we spent uh, some look at some locations. Uh, but you will see some plants during the lecture. Okay, so this is the reservoir. He said this is Locus Classicus of the plant. So very strangely, they always go to another location, and but this is the, the location where it grows. It's not a very high elevation. As you can see, it's just five, 600 meters above sea level. And this is the reservoir. So we walked around here. I got two locations and we found different plants. And so this was the first tulip we found. Uh, Tulipa Talievi. Uh, my friend who's into these uh, as a specialist uh, is uh, not a real Talievi, which is described. Uh, so he called this uh, Talievi Vedensky because he's the one who found it for the first time. Uh, but it will be described uh, later on. It was growing a mess there. You, uh, you will see more pictures of it later on. You'll see it's no trees, no shrubs. It's stony uh, area. Uh, south facing uh, uh, slope and lots of gate jars, but this is a really nice tulipa, just maybe 10 to 15 centimeters tall, a very, very attractive uh, uh, little tulip. Okay, more things around there was this special euphorbia, euphorbia repulum, and uh, it's very compact, maybe five, six centimeters uh, tall. I think one of the best uh, euphorbias we saw during this trip and so uh, so nice and compact that I've ever seen it anywhere else. 
We have dug one out because it says it has a very, very strange root, as you can see here. This is just uh, eight centimeters in this too, so it's a very dwarf uh, uh, plant with a very, very fat taproot. Other plants in the same area, Rosalia glabra. Uh, this was in full sun. It was very browny color. Later on, we saw a bigger one in, in green. You will see it later in the lecture. And here we are at the location. Uh, you, it's difficult to see, but we drove our car up here. And this is all Tulipa regale here. In the screen here, you couldn't believe it. It's, it's just an amazing plant, very close to the water. Uh, free of wind and air and very airy and here it is uh, a smashing plant just one one wonderful leaf uh, a single flower and just a few centimeters high a few close-ups of it so we were uh, really in heaven it couldn't be better and uh, all the plants were in full flower and uh, here a close-up of it and while there's leaf it is a very very attractive it's in cultivation it's not easy and here's uh, the the leaf, which I like even better, I think, than than the the flower. Even out of flower, it's a beautiful plant. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, the shark, is growing it uh, in in the sandy soil here in Holland. He got about a square meter in in, uh, in his uh, uh, well his nursery. He's not selling them, by the way. Uh, but uh, he says. One year they flower very well, and the other year, year uh, less flowering size. And uh, but this is how how it is. And so a single leaf. And so after five hours uh, being in uh, in Kazakhstan, we hit the jackpot, and we could return home. But we didn't. We we uh, drove around and found uh, more interesting plants. We are still still at the same location. A lot of gaijas are in in this area. Uh, this is the, the yellow one, and it can also be a bit creamy uh, in color. It's still the same species. Gages are very, very difficult to, to key out, but uh, Vladimir was uh, uh, an expert on this, so it was very, very handy. An iris I would love to see, and then we found quite a lot of flower, is Iris Kolpokovskiana. Uh, again, uh, just uh, started the snow had melted, uh, the, the grass still needs to, to grow, and uh, on, on various areas we found uh, lots and lots of these uh, wonderful irises, and quite a lot of variation as well. Very pale ones, uh, even almost white ones, and uh, uh, within you see also another uh, little uh, crocus. Here it is, Crocus latavicus. Uh, also an, a very nice plant, well known from uh, this area in the Tian Shan. Uh, we found not big sheets of it, but I've seen pictures in the wild, which is almost completely covered by these. Well, when you have a good uh, uh, botanist with you, you get to see the, the best plants and the special plants, because I would not, I wouldn't stop here because it, it does, it looks very bleak, but uh, as you can see, uh, my friends are already on their knees, and this is the, the habitat from Iris almatensis. Another uh, nice, uh, I think it's Uno iris, as you see. It's very, very variable uh, from a creamy uh, brown to uh, blue ones and uh, in between. It's a very, very uh, interesting plant. And we only found this on this location. And it's also uh, uh, written down uh, for the details in the uh, in botanic uh, uh, magazines from here. So Iris almatensis. I've never heard of it before but it's good to find it in, uh, in good flower. Just a few snapshots from the area. If you go to uh, areas in Kazakhstan, you don't see all, it's, it's only near the mountains, but these are more hilly uh, areas. And the hills are no, no, uh, no shrubs almost, no trees. It's easy to drive around and you'll see uh, beautiful uh, uh, scenic uh, views. Uh, these are also known from this area. Uh, well, when the sheep are the sheep have been there, it's uh, don't don't walk around to see plants because they're all nibbled, and uh, uh, it's a waste of time to look for plants. And here is this uh, Kazakh herdsman uh, looking after his, uh, his sheep. He got a mobile phone with him, so he took a picture of us as well. We went uh, down to the Kwadai Pass, and there's a small valley. We went into the valley because he knew on this on this slope here 
is the Corridal Shangini uh, growing uh, in the scree, by the way, in the middle of the scree. And we walked into the valley to see different plants. As you can see, Corridal Shangini, uh, a super plant. Uh, well, a few, it couldn't be better, a peak flowering time. Uh, so in the scree. And this is on the opposite side. It's amazing how much rubbish you see in the countries like this. They just dump everything uh, like uh, like bats or, or sofas or uh, other rubbish. So uh, it's a pity, but that's the, the case. In, if you go to Turkey, to Iran, uh, but also as you see here in Kazakhstan. But around these places, there are still good plants to see. A better form of uh, the crocus again, a super plant. Another a geisha, a taller one. The flowers are at least two, three centimeters uh, wide. So it's a very, very big geisha. Also on the uh, Corday Pass uh, is this uh, tulipa. Let's see, I have to put this away, okay. Tulipa Ostrovskiana. Uh, you'll see it later on uh, again. But this is uh, a typical location. It is very well known and we, we searched for red ones as well, but they were not in really in, in good, good flowering form. Uh, we hope to see them in, in uh, a few uh, months, sorry, a few weeks later in, in, in April this year. So let's see uh, it will work. Oh, what's going on? Yeah. Tulpa Ostrovskiana close up. And it's very variable. As you can see, orangey yellow with these red stripes. And I like also this uh, wonderful uh, curved uh, leaves. The same uh, area, so to the left, which you, which you can see are the yellow tulips a bit higher up at the, at the rich tulip by new Newtons, also very dwarf, uh, a very fragile uh, flower and, and stem. Here's a close-up of it, just uh, 10 to 15, 15 centimeters. You see very small leaves and the logo, they like cow dung, as you can see, they do well on it. But further on, on the Kuda Pass, the Kuda Pass uh, will be very, very interesting to see uh, in the end of April, more and more plants will be in flower. And this is Leontici Iwismanii, uh, a very large one. Uh, the plant itself in here is uh, including the flower about 20 centimeters. A wonderful, these uh, uh, gray leaf, blue gray leaf uh, uh, leaves. Close up of it, Leontis. And Reem, several reams, uh, still compact, low at the ground. They will grow a bit higher up later on. This, the, the, the leaves are up to 20 centimeters here uh, and they will flower later in the year. Well, one or two corridals popped up there, but I know in April, uh, later April, it will be full of corridals, Lady Boreana, a very uh, well-known plant in cultivation as well. And the yellow ones are a geisha again. The only one in flower, uh, we've seen, I've seen this also in uh, Uzbekistan, Irantus longish tipitata, a very nice, a large flowering form, uh, a plant up to eight centimeters and the flowers up to two to three centimeters in diameter. A very, very nice plant. And anemone uh, petululosa, we have seen sheets in Tajikistan, but here in Kazakhstan, uh, they were just starting to get into flower. We are still at the Kordai Pass. Now we move to the other side of the lake, the, Korda, the, uh, the Kapchagai Lake, because in that area is a special uh, area you just can drive in. As you can see, it's very sandy and a few bits and pieces you can maybe recognize already. In this, it's very, very sandy. There's also a reservoir and we found some really, really nice plants. Uh, I was very happy to see this fritillaria. Well, they call it Rhin, uh, uh, Petalum, uh, uh, because it has a special, well, knob at the back of one of the petals. Uh, it's very variable in color. This is just uh, maybe 10 centimeters tall, a very, very nice deep pink form, but also white ones, almost, well, white ones were around. As you can see, the soil is very, very sandy and full sun. One of the nicest astragalus at that time of the year we, have to, we are still in the first week of uh, April, as a full flower, Astragalus palaceae. Uh, very compact, uh, very nice uh, uh, woolly leaves and uh, super, super uh, nice pink flowers. 
Rindra, a very strange uh, uh, species, especially when it is in buds, when it's growing uh, longer, taller, uh, it's, it's more open. Uh, Rindra uh, makes this uh, uh, very strange uh, flowers, not completely, well, uh, this is the flower, it's not very much, but the, it's very, very hairy, uh, very uh, attractive, I can say. It's different from many, many other flowers. And then the highlight there was this iris, Iris tenidifolia. Uh, it's very grassy-like uh, leaves, as you can see here, and they just pop up. Uh, it's very variable. This was a very dark uh, form with wonderful, these dark veins on the uh, pale uh, petals. The same we saw before, but I, I like this so much because here you can see it is a nice and butt, uh, the reverse side, a bit darker. But as, uh, and here you can see the sandy soil. It's uh, just, that's the soil we should grow all these plants in. Here it is in an uh, open condition. So, Tulipa talievi. It's a very widespread species, but the set, uh, as I said again, it uh, must be, be, be described officially. Now, the Gaja. Well, what? And uh, higher up, we are now into an, an, a, st a steep uh, area uh, with some some rocky rocky faces. There was a sphigia. Uh, this plant can be up to 50, 60, 70 centimeters in diameter, but it's a very, very attractive, nice uh, pink uh, flowers. And here we are uh, just a bit higher up, and you can see the view over the lake. And here is the location, location of the Tulipa arbeti, uh, and, and a plant always growing in scree conditions, not in sandy soil, uh, variable as well. Uh, I like this short stem here. Of course, it's just in, in flower. It will, will elongate a bit uh, like that. But look at these wonderful leaves. It's just stunning. Uh, we had some rain here, uh, but rain has, has also his... Uh, as extras, you can see some raindrops here near to the butt, and it makes a very attractive uh, uh, picture like that. This asset is very variable. It can be, uh, most flowers are like that, but some are really open, and then you see that there's markings inside, but a few are also uh, completely yellow with no markings at all. And so in totally one of the very attractive uh, tulips uh, from that area. We are going now more north, uh, crossing uh, Cap Chagai. So there's the lake. We go north of the lake. It's about three hours drive from uh, uh, Almaty. And that's uh, an area with also a lot of good, good plants. As you can see, we were very lucky with the weather because this road here, we had a four by four car with us. If it would be muddy, it would be a, a terrible to, to drive in here. But now it was dry, we were very lucky. And you see a blue sky, what could we wish more for? So more close up. And uh, so we parked our car just the way back and we walked over here to look at uh, pl uh, various plants. Uh, as said, we were very early in the, in, the, in the year. So if you go in the first week in, in, in April, you won't see a lot of variation. You will see sometimes the same plants. If you, that's why I decided to go for the AGS uh, tour uh, two, three weeks later. So we'll see more of the different plants, but no, uh, uh, unfortunately, no uh, tulipa regali. So here, uh, they call it here Cerasus. It's a kind of prunus, Tianxianica, very variable. It's creeping, this one, a creeping form. It can be also very deep pink. It's a beautiful plant. I got some seeds uh, a few years ago, and I got some plants with, uh, and they hoped they probably flower this year for the first time. Ephedra. Another plant, which can be very attractive, especially when the, the red buds, uh, sorry, the red, the red uh, berries are in. Again, very stony area. And in the stony area, as you can see here, yellow dots, masses of uh, uh, Tulipa albetia, albetia again. It's beautiful. It was very hot. It was maybe 25, 27 degrees above zero. So it was very hot. The first, I never expected uh, so much heat at that time of the year but it was very attractive to walk there. And even uh, some variation, as you can see, this is the normal yellow one, and this is more orangey red uh, form of the uh, Tulipa alberti. And this is completely a red form. Uh, 
I've seen this on many occasions in Iran and in Turkey, actually here in Tatarican. This was just starting to come up. As you can see, normally it has a flower stem of maybe well, 15, 20 centimeters. But now uh, just starting from the ground level, it already starts to open its buds with uh, bl nice blue flowers. Tribal pogon, you see in areas in Asia, uh, like also Iran, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, a lot of these tragopogons. They're very, very attractive. It's early in the year, and later in April, you'll see many, many uh, more in, in good, uh, good flower. In yellow, in pink, uh, this flower is at least six to seven centimeters in diameter. A ranunculus just popping up, Ranunculus regalianus. Uh, well, it like a buttercup more uh, up to. 20 centimeters tall, uh, growing in very dry conditions, by the way. A spire, spirea, uh, a small bush, uh, was not very tall, maybe 80 centimeters. From uh, that area, we're going back towards uh, Almaty, and we took a side tour to Tamgila Tash. And as you can see, this is the normal area, the, the big fast areas in Kazakhstan. Grass, 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 and it's amazing. Uh, but uh, if you go, if you got the map out, there are locations to look at for uh, for plants. So we did that too. And we also came across this, well, I call it wild horses. Uh, of course, they're not wild. They were just uh, grazing there and uh, a cowboy, well, a Kazakh herdman, uh, uh, took them over the road and uh, they were crossing the road in, in big, big uh, speed. Also, more, more animals there, tortoise. Uh, there, now is the time of the year the tortoise uh, come out. We saw several uh, in, in the country there, especially in the area you just saw with the grassy area uh, with no trees at all. A small uh, gerbil, uh, the great gerbil, a, a, a very strange uh, animal digging holes everywhere. You have to be careful or you'll break your, uh, uh, your, your, uh, your lag. Unfortunately, this is not the best picture, but we are uh, on top of a mountain and it was uh, so much wind. So it was very difficult to, to take a proper picture, but give you an impression how many of these wonderful tulips are at the same location. Here's a view down. So we drove down into this area uh, to look at uh, more uh, special uh, plants. So here are no trees at all. It's still bleak. You think it's bleak, uh, but I can assure you there are still plants to be seen. Uh, some of the different forms of this uh, fritillaria. There were many, but it's a bit more, it's hotter area than we have been before. So most of them were already out of flower or just shriveled, but still a, a wonderful to see. And another tulipa, and uh, they call it so far, uh, it looks like Colpa Koskiana, but it's not. It's, uh, my friend will uh, probably describe it uh, because I think he's bringing out a book uh, somewhere uh, in uh, about wild tulips, about 880 species are uh, described in this book. Uh, he's work, uh, has worked also close together with Diane Everett. Uh, so it will be uh, good to see that. A beautiful yellow, uh, well, it's not tall, maybe 25 centimeters, Tulipa Kolpakovskiana. Uh, we had to buy a ticket to get in, but it was uh, worth to see something different. It's very well known for the petroglyphs there. You can see them here on, I have no idea how old they are. I haven't checked uh, the web, the internet yet. Uh, but as you can see, these, these uh, uh, petroglyphs are up to two, three meters uh, in, in, in diameter. It's, it's really giant. So we walked around there and uh, it was interesting and uh, to see. So, and then suddenly in a, in, a, in a, well, shady position, more shady position was this Corridalis again. Uh, a super plant, really uh, uh, a very long spurs. Uh, the plant, just, this is about six centimeters at least here. Maybe a bit uh, even bigger. Well, we were very early in the year and just a few sh images from uh, areas uh, right in the neighborhood of uh, uh, Alma Ati. We will visit this area uh, later in the year. 
more plants will be in flower. The, the, the snow was just uh, disappeared. You can see no grass. We didn't see many plants here. Uh, this is a view with uh, the Paisia uh, shrankiana, uh, and here's a close up of it. So uh, we will go into this area uh, in April to explore and definitely see some uh, new uh, plant species. This is not far from uh, uh, growing uh, in the special pedicularis alberti, also an, uh, an uh, endemic uh, pedicularis from this area. This is about uh, well, 10 centimeters tall, not very tall at all. On the way back to Almaty, we, we stopped at the marketplace and we, we it was amazing to see. They were selling these, uh, these lots of fruit trees, but also conifers. And the conifers were all imported from, uh, from Belgium. The labels were still on. So I'm, I'm sure a big container loads of uh, plants are exported to Kazakhstan. And uh, well, this woman, uh, uh, it was very sunny. She got some uh, 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 the umbrella with her for the shade. As you, but all these conifers are all from uh, imported from Belgium. And then they even sold tulips. Not the quality we used to <laughs> to sell in Holland, but uh, it was nice to see some real uh, tulips from uh, Kazakhstan. Uh, probably all imported from Holland, maybe. <laughs> Now, uh, we went to a very, very far end uh, location. I think this is uh, one of the last days. And during our, this trip, it was about four hours drive. Uh, we saw a lot of people uh, along the road uh, selling these un un uh, alliums. So by accident, we, we, we drove into a small valley and this, this guy uh, just collected these alliums. Well, from amazing places, high in the mountains, and you really have to be climbing up uh, big rocks to get it. It's almost uh, frightening to get there uh, to climb up. And uh, so this is uh, him again. He cleaned this uh, uh, allium and selling them uh, along the road. Uh, we went into the valley, saw some other plants like Corridalis cloxescens, uh, always growing in more shady positions. Here's a close up of it, almost pure white, not a, not a really dark center. And here, a bigger plant and a smaller one of Rosalia glabra. You saw that also at the beginning of the lecture. But here, a more uh, greener uh, because it was growing in more uh, a shady position. There were some shrubs around here and a few small trees. We climbed up higher and higher. And you always try to go somewhere. Oh, well, this is maybe interesting to see. So we saw first a Rindra and we took a picture then. I looked over the, over the edge and I found this place. It was masses of uh, Iris Kushas Kowiski in various colors. It was an amazing place. Uh, so uh, we, could, we couldn't wish for better ones. It was a day with lots of these wonderful plants. Look at that. It's uh, icy, icy blue almost. A nice, this white edge on the leaves. We continue our trip and we came into an area with uh, the Sogeti Valley and it was very, very bleak. And you can't believe it, but this is full of tulips. Very, very tiny tulips. It, uh, you can see it uh, uh, on the ground here. Uh, it's, it was wet and dried up. It's shriveling. It's uh, all these cracks. But in the cracks are a lot of uh, wonderful plants. Look at this. This is just maybe... Uh, six centimeters tall plant. The flower is maybe two centimeters. It was a lot of wind, uh, but it's growing there by the thousands. A beautiful, beautiful, tiny uh, tulip salsola. You'll see more of that. And this also is growing in these uh, uh, very strange uh, dry areas, this Reem Tataricum. We went to another valley with a bit of more rocky areas. Uh, and suddenly this ranunculus uh, popped up. Uh, uh, a buttercup very close to the ground. As you can see, it's a, a, a dry area again. Uh, not very tall, but a very attractive plant, as I, I think. Never thought of finding a Valer uh, valeriana there. This was very, very tiny. This is maybe three centimeters in total. It's a very, very attractive one. Kino villa. As you see, the, the, this is uh, the kind of uh, yeah, uh, substrate you need in your garden to grow plants like this. 
very crumbly uh, stony soil. We climbed a bit higher up and more of this Irish Kuzhatskowiski. Uh, you can go anywhere. You can see it's, it's growing all these cracks. It's full of this wonderful Irish Kuzhatskowiski. And then on the way back, we made a stop because this was a highlight for us. Uh, as you can see in the far end, this is all very bleak and and, uh, uh, and dry. And just on the edge is this, well, thousands, thousands of this uh, tulipa salsola. Uh, it was very windy, difficult. I have to admit this picture is taken by an iPhone 14 Pro. So if you got that, it's still uh, uh, clever to have an iPhone with you to make a, a little uh, video as well I've made. And here, uh, Sassola again, uh, it's very stunning uh, uh, tulip, which should be grown more often. Uh, I don't know if, if it's difficult, if you see it growing here in these uh, very dry areas, but maybe in our climate it's too wet and uh, it's maybe better in the pot. Okay, uh, this was the last picture uh, from the lecture to give you an impression about Kazakhstan. It was just six days. And this was the area we did. So the last picture was taken here. So this is about uh, uh, totally, it's maybe six hour drive and we went into here. So uh, just for information for uh, the uh, AGS tour for uh, uh, in April, we will, uh, don't, we will cover this area here and the area here, but we don't go into this area and here. The rest we will do and we will do more. This is the, the, the trip uh, laid out. So we start in Almaty, we go to Kapshagai again, and then we go to the, the Merkel here, but we will have some site uh, shoots here. Uh, you can see it on the, on the program. Uh, we will, these are the locations where we have, uh, not here, this uh, Almaty, Merkel, Taras, and Zabakli, that's where we will stay. And uh, from Zabakli, we will drive back by train, uh, night train to Almaty. So it's uh, it's really in very interesting an area with lots more uh, flowers uh, we will probably will see, and uh, so uh, this will be a joint uh, trip. Uh, Connor Smith from Utrecht Botanic Garden will join uh, me. Uh, as said, uh, as well, you can read it and you have seen it. It's an it will be a very easy trip. No difficult walks. No uh, steep uh, uh, areas. It will be easy uh, to make uh, pictures and a lot of, lot of flowers. I think at least uh, 20 times more different things uh, than we have seen now because we did just six weeks in a very small area. Uh, we didn't really go into the mountains. So uh, more information is on the, on the website or on the information which uh, Ross have sent uh, to you already.